Okay. Okay, many thanks um, for having me today and inviting me to give a talk. And my job today is to talk about the risk prediction and recurrence detection as an important part in uh, the patient journey of the patient with adrenocortical carcinoma or for short um, ACC. So just a few words about um, um, the kidney and the adrenals. So the adrenals are sitting on top of the kidney and um, on the border between the chest and the abdomen. Yeah. So and usually they're relatively small, but they are very powerful um, uh, hormone factories and they actually produce three main hormones. One is cortisol, the sugar and stress hormone, and which if at present in excess can cause diabetes and high blood pressure. Another one is aldosterone, the salt regulating hormone, which if present in, it, in excess can cause high blood pressure and um, low potassium in the blood, which can be dangerous for the heart. And the third kind of hormones the adrenals produce is DHEA, which is a precursor for male and also female sex steroids. So we often see an excess of male sex steroids due to adrenal tumors, in particular adrenocortical carcinomas, and sometimes in rare cases also female sex steroids. And um, adrenal tumors arise from the adrenal and are actually quite frequent. And I just wanted to um, tell you about this, that actually 3 to 5% of the general population have an adrenal tumor. Yeah? But often it goes undetected. Nowadays, we often detect adrenal tumors because we run a lot more CT scans. These are numbers from the United States. And you can see in 1980, there were 3 million CT scans per year. But like 34 years later, we are up to 81 million CT scans while the population hasn't changed much. So that means there's a huge number of patients that possibly do not undergo work up the, what we call the adrenal incidentaloma iceberg. So the, the large amount of patients who um, have an adrenal tumor that is often only incidentally discovered. Adrenocortical carcinoma is a relatively rare tumor, but in large series from specialist centers, uh, it is actually diagnosed in 2 to 11% of those cases that are referred to the specialist centers. But often radiologists don't worry so much about smaller nodules. Imaging scans are obviously the way the nodule is first um, detected. But often the different kinds of scans, CT and MRI and PET-CT, struggle to really um, tell us reliably if a tumor is harmless or cancerous, so if it is indeed ACC. So I outlined the patient journey here. And um, this shows you the first part of the patient journey is obviously the discovery of the adrenal mass. And then we as clinicians and also you as patient have two main questions. Firstly, is the adrenal mass harmless or is it cancer? And secondly, as the adrenal glands are hormone factories, does the adrenal tumor overproduce hormones? After that, you might undergo additional tests, imaging or blood and urine tests, because we also need to find out about the exact degree of hormone excess. And the surgeon wants to know from us, is this really potentially cancer? And if it is cancer, can the surgeon operate it still very well? And then obviously the next bit is surgery, and I'm not talking about surgery, but Radu Mihai will do this in his related talk in this event. And after surgery, very importantly, when the tumor has been completely removed, we want to know how likely is it that the tumor could come back, what we call recurrence. And also secondly, if we think that the recurrence risk is relatively high, should we do something about it, which usually is giving mitotane as a treatment in patients that are apparently tumor-free, but to prevent recurrence. And then after that, obviously, we will monitor you and follow you up in the post-operative period. Yeah? We also look if you're on the right dose of mitotane, we check your blood levels and make sure you have hydrocortisone because mitotane obviously suppresses the function of the residual adrenal gland. And um, 
if recounts is detected, yeah, then it's obviously too, uh, important to think what happens next. And um, this will be covered by Nick Reed on his bit on recurrent and metastatic ACC and how to treat this. But this talk is actually about risk prediction and recurrence detection. So this is the NSAT ACC classification. Yeah. Um, um, NSAT, the European Network for the Study of Adrenal Tumors, has developed this classification in 2009 and it allows us very well to assess risk. So importantly, we look if the tumor is less than five centimeters or greater five centimeters. Then it is important to see is, has the tumor invaded any surrounding organs. And another very important point is are lymph nodes um, uh, attacked by the tumors? And in the advanced stage, in stage four, are there already metastases? You know, has a tumor already disseminated to other organs in the body? So this classification was introduced um, uh, 11 years ago, and there was a modification of the classification, which was done uh, five years ago, which actually found out that the prognosis of a patient also differs dependent on whether they have metastases, but also how many metastases, um, how many organs are affected by metastases. Okay, as a next step, um, a scoring system has been developed, which is called MGRAS. Yeah? The MGRAS score, modified tumor gray, R status, age, and symptoms. And nowadays, if you come to our clinic, we will assess your MGRAS score to predict what um, the outlook is in every case. It is important for, for this to consider the patient's age, to see if the patient has overproduction of hormones, and the third parameter is to know, has a surgeon been able to completely remove the tumor at surgery? Then what is the NSAT stage of the NSAT classification I just showed you? And last but not least, very importantly, what is the cell proliferation index of the adrenal cancer, which is also called ki 67 And depending on what percentage points the ki 67 has, this impacts on the prognosis, the likelihood of having recurrence. And we studied this actually in, um, and now it's hung up. It's, okay. We studied this actually, yeah, Yassir El Hassan and Christina Ronke um, have led on this in uh, the patients we um, saw in the last 10 years in uh, Birmingham. And, um, this uh, Yassia has shown this as a poster last year, and this actually shows um, that this new score, MGRAS, predicts very well for how long patients remain tumor free over time. This axis down here shows the time in months, yeah, so many months and years, and dependent on what your age is, your symptoms, how well the surgery went, and what your NSAID stage is, we can sort of predict the likelihood that the tumor will come back. And this obviously also determines how long overall survival is. And as you see reassuringly, many patients survive long-term for a long time. And way forward, and this talk today is also a little bit to show you the future, is not only to look at the signs and symptoms and what we see under the microscope when we look at the tumor, but also what we see when we look at the tumor in the test tubes. So if we undertake the analysis of the genetic information of the tumor. And that has been done in a large NSAT project where again also Christina Ronke was involved um, to look at the tumors from 339 ACC patients, um, all uh, treated in specialist centers of the European Network for the Study of Adrenal Tumors. And this actually has shown that all ACCs usually, if you look at these molecular parameters, fall in three groups and that the three groups have very different survivals and very different um, risks of the tumor coming back. And this is obviously a very important information. And while this is not yet routinely done, we are working very hard to show more evidence for this so that this can be considered to be in routine assessment, yeah? so that we can take a piece of your tumor at surgery and then do very sophisticated analysis that tell us what the risk is of the tumor to come back.
So the first part of the talk it talks about it has talked about risk prediction. So I told you that the MGRAS score is um, uh, helping us to determine the risk of recurrence in your case. And that if we determine that there is an increased risk of recurrence, you should start on mitrotain treatment. And um, mitrotain should be administered as soon as possible. We aim to have this within 12 weeks of diagnosis. And usually we give it at least for three years if you remain tumor free. And very importantly, hydrocortisone needs to be given at double the dose that is usually used in adrenal insufficiency. Mitrotain, obviously, this is very specifically directed against the adrenal and therefore also affects the healthy adrenal that is left on the other side. And to replace the normal adrenal function, you need to take hydrocortisone tablets. But because mitrotain um, rapidly breaks down hydrocortisone, you need to take double the dose. This is very important. And we will have next year the results of a large study we um, here in Birmingham also participated in, the ADUVO study, um, which actually tested whether patients with a high KI67 cell proliferation index above 10% uh, and those under 10% um, benefit from mitrotein treatment. We know already that the ones above 10% proliferation index benefit very well from adjuvant mitrotein treatment. But um, this study will give us a good answer to whether patients who has, appear to have a low risk of recurrence should also consider mitrotain treatment. So what about recurrence detection? How do we find out if the tumor comes back? And obviously, uh, very importantly, you need to do regular imaging every three months in years one and two after successful surgery. Yeah, are not surgery means that the entire tumor has been removed and in every six months in years three to five and annually thereafter in up to 10 years yeah and i will tell you a little bit about urine steroid metabolomics and liquid biopsy which are not yet used routinely in clinic but which are very promising tests to help us to detect a recurrence potentially earlier than ct scans so what is urine steroid metabolomics? I told you that the adrenal produces three kinds of steroids, aldosterone, which regulates the salt, and cortisol, which regulates the sugar, and DHEA, the androgens, which regulates sex steroid production. And all these chicken wires stand for different steroids in the urine we can detect that have been produced in the adrenal. So if you as a patient collect a 24-hour urine and bring this to us, we can put it into a mass spectrometer, a sophisticated machine, and measure the concentrations of all these steroids. And um, if we look at this, um, these are the concentrations we measured in 88 men and women that are healthy. And um, here this shows how much is in the urine, and this shows here all the different kinds of steroids we find in the urines. And you can see here in orange, the, all those metabolites of cortisol are very highly excreted. And in adults, and this is an adult cohort, we have also very high excretion of male hormones, obviously higher in men than in women. So what we actually um, developed is the urine steroid metabolomics test to differentiate in the first instance between a malignant and a benign tumor, between ACC and a harmless adrenal tumor. And the idea behind this was, if you have an ACA, so a benign harmless adenoma, that then basically your tumor cell is likely to be very differentiated. And that means still being able to produce all the end products of adrenal hormone production. However, if you have a cancer cell, a cancer cell is usually very immature. And that means we would assume that it is not able to make all the end products, but only the early stages of steroid production. This was our hypothesis when we started this project. And what we did initially, and that was published 10 years ago, um, we um, took 150 patients with B9 tumor, adrenal tumors and 47 with um, malignant tumors. The patients collected a 24-hour urine a 24-hour urine was analyzed by mass spectrometry. And then uh, a little computer helped us um, to determine um, um, what, which of the steroids could differentiate between 
a malignant ACC and a harmless adrenal tumor. And that actually revealed a malignant fingerprint, a steroid fingerprint in the urine that actually can detect ACC much more sensitively than imaging. So this was a very important discovery. And um, I show you two examples of how this works. So these are two scans from two different patients. And um, the, um, the red circle is around two large adrenal tumors. You see this big adrenal tumor here on the left and this very large adrenal tumor on the right. And um, both patients collected the 24-hour urine and we did our urine steroid metabolomics analysis. That looks very complex, but I explain this to you. All the red dots are results from adrenal cancers, ACCs, and all the blue dots are results from harmless adrenal tumors. And this green triangle is the urine steroid result um, from this tumor here on the left. And you see that obviously this tumor here is at the 90% line and is surrounded by lots of red tumors. So we would definitely think that this is an ACC. Now I show you the uh, urine result of this tumor. The same red dots and blue dots, but you see this tumor actually is here completely on the side of the blue dots. So there's no indication in the urine that this is an ACC. Yeah. So, and um, the tumor on the left side was operated and it was an adrenocortical carcinoma, which was actually very highly malignant. The tumor on the right side, because the urine told us it's not an ACC, we actually took and did something which we rarely do in adrenal tumors, we did a biopsy. And this was a very smart thing to do because the biopsy showed us that this was not an ACC, but a lymphoma, a non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And the patients could um, already start chemotherapy the next day. If he would have undertaken surgery, the patient's chemotherapy would have been delayed by three months and the patient might not have survived, but luckily she completely survived and is now a long-term survivor of this tumor. But it's not an ACC, it's a completely different tumor. So then it's obviously important, we discovered this malignant steroid fingerprint, but in test development, it's extremely important to validate your test. That means you need to calculate how many patients you need to show that the test is also working when you apply it to future patients, and, um, and which we call prospective patients. So like patients that forward go and collect 24 hour urines and that are newly diagnosed. And for this, uh, we collaborated with John Deeks and Alice Sitch from the University of Birmingham, and they are test diagnostic test specialists. And, um, and John calculated that we would need 2,000 patients with newly diagnosed adrenal tumors to um, answer this question, um, um, hoping that 5% um, of them would have an ACC um, for us to be able to answer it with 2,000 tumors. But obviously, this is a very large number. And we only achieved this by collaborating, obviously, with the European Network for the Study of Adrenal Tumors from, with many specialist centers all around the world. And we here in Birmingham have led this study. And this actually um, um, helped us. Um, Irina Bankos, who was the lead fellow, helped us greatly to collect uh, these tumors from centers um, all over the world and uh, throughout Europe. And we achieved the collection of 2,200 um, patients and uh, 24 hour urines within five years, which was a big achievement. And um, then um, we were um, pleased to see that, that actually the prediction came true that 5% um, of the tumors that uh, we collected were ACCs, so that meant that 2,000 patients were enough um, for us to judge whether our test would also be working if we included in routine clinical practice. So we also found some small numbers of other malignant and other benign tumors, but the test is obviously uh, laid out for the detection of ACC. Um, one thing that we found out also with this study is that actually if you have a tumor that's smaller than four centimeter, you almost don't have to worry that you have ACC. Yeah? Only if your tumor is larger than four centimeters and has suspicious imaging criteria, then there is a likelihood you uh, have ACC 
which is 32% in young patients less than 40 years and 21% in older patients. So that means even if your tumor looks suspicious, it doesn't mean that it needs to be an ACC. But it also means that when looking at ACC, we need to um, concentrate on those patients that are, have large tumors and that have suspicious looking tumors on imaging. So what we did is we measured these 2,200 urine samples with mass spectrometry. And you see a few photos of uh, the people in the lab who helped with all of this. And then we put it again through our machine learning method to determine if the tumor was of low risk, moderate risk, or high risk of ACC. So if we take all the 2017 patients and we apply our tests only to those that uh, are larger tumors and have suspicious imaging, then this shows that 40% of those have ACC. But if we then do the urine tests, we can quickly identify the absolute majority of the ACC patient and make sure they go to surgery quickly, immediately after their first scan and the urine test and don't need to wait for many other imaging tests that could not give the same information as a urine test. So importantly, we have also applied this now to recurrence detection. This is Vasilis Cortes, one of our lecturers in the lab, and he has led on a study where we looked at 24-hour urines from patients who had surgery for their ACC and had successful surgery, so all the tumor was removed, but um, they wanted to monitor whether the tumor would come back. These are again the red dots from all the uh, previously confirmed ACC and the blue dots from all the previously confirmed benign tumors. Yeah? And all the green dots actually are from one of our patients who actually very regularly um, um, collected urine, actually once a month. And you see this urine here. This actually was collected before her surgery for an adrenocortical carcinoma. And you can see it is surrounded by red dots, so very suspicious to be an ACC. When you see a cluster of um, urines here, they were collected when she was diagnosed with an isolated liver metastasis, with a lesion that was arising from her ACC in the liver, which was then removed. And all urines she has collected ever since, you see, are on the blue side, so there's no evidence of the tumor coming back. And we have uh, applied this now to a large group of patients, and this was actually just recently published in March 2020. And um, what we can do is also visualize the steroid data, which what we call heat maps. Red means it's increased, blue means it's normal. And you can see here, these are four patients uh, who collected several urine samples. And you can see over time, their red recurred. And this was incident with um, uh, detection of tumor recurrence on the scan. And actually what Vasilis found in this proof of principle study, that actually um, the um, steroid metabolomics detected the recurrence of the tumor earlier, in some cases up to 10 months earlier than imaging would. And when we applied um, the machine learning again, this little computer man who is helping us, then we could find a very good prediction of recurrence from the urine steroid metabolome. While as a clinician, I can judge the steroid profiling quite well. If the computer gets all the data fed, the computer can more reliably predict the risk of recurrence. So this is a very exciting tool. And just like a very brief look into the future, what is currently also examined in our center by Christina Wonke and her group is what we call a liquid biopsy. A liquid biopsy is taking a simple blood sample from you whilst you are under follow-up for um, an, a successfully removed ACC tumor. And then Christina is actually extracting free DNA from the blood, yeah, tumor DNA, to see if there is any in the blood that could be detected. Yeah? So this is a very, very sensitive method, but obviously it is technically very demanding. I show you a very brief overview of how this works. So first, obviously, the blood is taken and the sample is prepared and the genetic information of the blood cells is extracted. 
then basically um, the DNA, the genetic information is um, extracted and quantified and then it undergoes sequencing. So all the letters of the genomic alphabet um, are actually determined. And then basically we have our little computer friend again who analyzes all the data and that then identifies typical changes uh, that can be observed in ACC patients, in the genetic code of ACC patients, and therefore can nicely detect whether any tumor cells are circulating. Tumor cells in a very small amount, perhaps earlier than uh, when there are so many that they have formed a metastasis in any organ. So this might bring a possibility to, to detect the tumor even earlier. Yeah. So the next steps here is what Christina is currently undertaking actually with a grant that is supported by AMEND um, to collect more blood samples from uh, forward-going ACC patients. So this is still work in progress, but very promising. So um, that means uh, while regular imaging is currently the standard, urine steroid metabolomics might join us soon in routine clinical practice. And we hope um, that urine steroid metabolomics might be available already in the end of the year for differentiating between benign and malignant tumors and within two years for follow-up of adrenal cancer patients. Liquid biopsy is currently being researched, but will be a, a very exciting tool to detect the recurrence of an ACC even earlier. Yeah? But it's good to show that the patient journey can also have a happy end. And that's one of our patients, which is obviously the photo is taken with her consent, who gave us this very nice biscuit plate and, uh, after she was discharged 10 years after the um, diagnosis of the initial tumor. And this last slide shows all the people who have contributed to this. Christina Ronke, Yasir Al-Hassan, Vasilis Cortis, Angela Taylor, who did all the mass spectrometry analysis. Irina Bankos, who was a lead fellow um, of the Urine X study, and our excellent um, uh, clinical adrenal tumor team with surgeon and oncologist. Many thanks.